Sound check. Check. One, two.
kitty's still hiding, Scrappy. Yeah. All right, good evening. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Infocom from 1984. Last week, we uh, explored the Heart of Gold, got stuck, and ended up having to resort to... Uh, and visit clues to continue the story. So, uh, I'm playing this with the uh, terminal app Frots, and I'm using a cool retro term as my terminal. And, uh, so let's restore back to. Heart of Gold. It's just inventory. What? Our inventory again. I Babble fish. What the heck? Why don't I have Plotter, where's the plotter? What the heck here? What are the names of my saves? Alright, let's try heart to restore. The wrong restore point. Heart two. Okay, this looks close enough. Because uh 
Okay, so this is the bridge of the Heart of Gold. A gangway leads down, and steam comes from an entrance to port. Next to the control console is Eddie, the shipboard computer. Lying on the deck is the plotter. Advanced T substitute is here. Hypersonic pliers, diffusion rafts, sails for sure, a satchel, a handbag, and the pincer. All right. This is where I want it to be. Now let's see. Inventory. You have no tea, a towel, your gown. All right, yeah, this is where I wanted to start from. <laughs> the atomic vector plotter has a small receptacle and a long dangly bit. It bears a small label which reads, Another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Now we learned that um, okay what else is here now let's go ahead and type verbose examine console well, I forgot a lot since Tuesday night. The simplest one is a large receptacle of some kind. Consult guide. Let's try this. On plotter. The atomic vector plotter is one of the primary application devices of improbability physics. Alrighty. X pincer. Looks like every other. Okay, let's look here. We have. Oh, let's see. That's right, I gotta go get the, I remember what I gotta do. I gotta go get the spare improbability drive down in the engine room. I remember now. So down, aft, aft. Okay, so we already went through this. Get generator taken. All right, four. port. Okay. Four. Port. This should take us to the galley. Open carton. What? A oh, carton. Open carton. Get gun. I don't know if I can or not, but taken. Cool. So now we want to go starboard and back up. Okay, so now drop generator. Examine generator. The spare improbability drive has switch, a long cord ending with a large plug and a short cord. There's a misspelling there. Key it COD instead of cord. Ending with a small plug. It bears a small label which reads, Another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Alright, so... Put small plug and small receptacle. And uh, 
we did defeat the bug bleeder blast of Troll um, before I quit last time. But we also took up too many turns and we didn't get a chance to grab the uh, the advanced card for the uh, Nutramat to get us a real cup of tea, which we'll need later. So I basically had to come back to this part. All right. Um, put bit and substitute. Oh, but you don't know the words when I misspell it. All right. <laughs> All right. Substitute. All right. What did I do here? Subst. <laughs> Learn how to type. Substitute. Examine. The atomic vector plotter has a small receptacle and a long dangly bit, which is sitting... Oh, it's already in the advanced T substitute. Okay. The short cord from the spare room probability drive... And probability... <laughs> there's another spelling mistake... Is plugged into the receptacle. It bears a small label, which reads, Another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Uh-oh. It is, of course, well known that careless talk costs lives, but the full scale of the problem is not always appreciated. For instance, at the exact moment you said put bit and substitute, or actually that was substitute, <laughs> a freak wormhole opened in the fabric of the space-time continuum and carried your words far, far back in time across almost infinite reaches of space to a distant galaxy where strange and warlike beings were poised on the brink of a frightful interstellar battle. The two opposing leaders were f meeting for the last time. A dreadful silence fell across the conference table as the commander of the Valhurgs resplendent in his black jeweled battle shorts, gazed levelly at the Gugvunt leader squatting opposite him in a cloud of green, sweet-smelling steam. As a million sleek and horribly beweaponed star cruisers poised to unleash electric death at his single word of command, the Vlorherg challenged his vile enemy to take back what it had said about his mother. The creature stirred in its sickly broiling vapor. Had said about his mother. Oh, and at that very moment, the words put bit in substitute drifted across the conference table. Unfortunately, in the Vlorherg tongue, this was the most dreadful insult imaginable, and there was nothing for it but to wage terrible war for centuries. Eventually, the error was detected, but over 250,000 worlds, their peoples and cultures perished in the Holocaust. You have destroyed most of a small galaxy. Please pick your words with greater care. Take that, Darth Vader. <laughs> All right, let's uh save. I'm going to call this heart 3.
and examine the plotter again. Okay, examine generator. The spare and probably dry, improbability drive has a switch, a long cord ending with a large plug, and a short cord plugged in to the atomic vector plotter. I wonder if it's because I shrank that a little bit. I'm cutting some letters off on the side. I should restart it. Oh well. You feel a wave of depression sweep over you and you turn to see that Marv Marvin the robot has stalked miserably into the room. Alright, so. Push switch. And we're in the dark. So look. So let's see. See, hear, feel, smell, and taste. So we got off. All right, so uh, let's listen. I know it's probably going to be smell, but hear, see, smell, feel, taste. Okay. Let's just do it again. You can see nothing, feel nothing, hear nothing, taste nothing. Okay, four of them. This time smell is going to work. Examine shadow. Okay. The shadow is vaguely bug bladder beast shaped. This is the lair of the ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll. There exist east and south, there are exits <laughs> east and southwest. The ravenous blood blotter beast of Troll is here, looking particularly nasty and hungry. The beast whips its evil smelling tail away from your nose and bellows a brain shattering roar. By suddenly, suddenly popping out of nowhere, you have disturbed its train of thought. However, since its train of thought was the usual one, and, in fact, the only one it knows, which goes like this. Hungry, 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 hungry. Bad-tempered, hungry. It soon starts to chug along again. You notice the beast Lazaro zap eyes, its swivel sheer teeth, and its several dozen tungsten carbide vast pain claws forged in the sun furnaces of Zangrijad. It has skin like a motorway and breath like a 747. It advances on you and roars out a demand that you say your name. Say, Arthur. Oops. The beast roars your name with relish and explains that once it has eaten you, your name will be added to its list of remembrance. I wonder if... Oh well. East, I think, is where we want to go. Yep. Beast Outer Lair. This is a large walled courtyard, strewn about it or a profusion of gnawed bones bleaching in the sun. In case the significance of these fails to strike you, there's also a sandstone memorial in the middle of the courtyard on which the beast has roughly carved the names of all its victims. Some sharp stones lie near the exit to the west. Okay, so we want to get stones. Cover head with towel. The 
ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll is completely bewildered. It is so dim, it thinks that if you can't see it, it can't see you. You have a few seconds before it realizes its mistake. Carve Arthur with stones. You chip away with the stone. It is not your best writing. That with your mounting sense of panic and a towel wrapped around your head. However, it suffices. Just as the beast is trying to work out where you've disappeared to, it suddenly sees your name freshly carved on its memorial of remembrance. Mystery solved. It realizes it must have already eaten you in a fit of absent-mindedness. Its mind is very, very small and quite frequently absent. It decides to give up the rest of its afternoon to the twin arts of digestion and contemplation. It settles down for a snooze. All right, West. Oh, shoot. Remove towel. You unwrap the towel from your head. Beast outer lair. This is a large walled courtyard. Strewn about. Or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. So now we want to go west. This is the lair of the ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll. Their exits east and southwest. Okay, southwest. Get interface. See, last time I took too many, uh, I took too many turns, and I didn't get a chance to grab this interface, and I'm going to need that to make a real cup of tea. All right. And I'm going to save. I'm going to call this beast, and I'm going to stop this from, uh, So let's quit. I'm going to stop this from cutting off that letter. Now. Now the now it'll be normal. Restore. And let's uh Let's go back to heart 3. Because Do I have examined gun? I just want to try this. The gun has a large label which reads Anti Bug Bladder Beast Ray Gun. It bears a small label which reads another fine product of the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. So let's push the switch. And let's uh, just go ahead and hit smell. Examine shadow. All right, now let's do this. Shoot beast with gun. See, that don't work. Some rays from the gun strike the ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll, but it only seems to make it matter. With a head splitting roar. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that that gun, that the gun, the, uh, yeah, that gun's worthless. And, uh, so we restored it. Beast. Z. All right, so t time passes. Okay, there we are. So, yeah, the last, uh, that would have been Tuesday. I used up too many turns. And I, uh, these guys came and got me before I got a chance to grab that interface. So, suddenly, a team of Fronerdian beast hunters charges in, intent on catching the beast for their zoo. Mistaking you for the beast, they fire stun guns at you, 
wrap you in nets and install you in a lovely little lair in the Fronerdes National Zoo. Three months later, the error is discovered. But while your damage suit is pending in the Fronerdian courts, the planet is invaded by bureaucratic pirates from Palladian Four. Impressed into bondage for a 16-year-old filing and sorting mission on the so-called basement world of Sporla in the Lesser Magellanic Cloud, you escape with the help of a tribe of nomadic asteroid painters. All right, we get another tool here, too. You develop a unique talent for asteroid painting, gaining considerable fame throughout the cloud. A nickel or deluxe is commissioned by his royal gorpness, Orbjefelk, the ruler of the 900 worlds of Gorp. But while working on this new masterpiece, your asteroid slips into a small passing black hole. Everything becomes dark. All right, so let's just go ahead and type smell and G, because then we should be back on the heart of gold now. Smell, taste, see, feel. Oh, let's look. What? See, feel, taste. One, two, three, four. <coughs> oh, wow. There's more things you can try with. Say your name. Read the memorial before typing your name. Read after carving. Show the thing. Carve the beast name. I might try some of that stuff. <laughs> Alright, so let's... Uh, where are we at here? We can see nothing, feel nothing, taste nothing, smell nothing. Listen. That's right. It's listen on the heart of gold. And we know that the exit's aft. All right. So we want to try this. So let's save. call this beast again and do we want to go back and try some of this stuff with the beast so we got a good save point where we've got past that point successfully yeah let's go ahead and try it so let's uh, restore back to heart three I think that's what that was push switch Um, it's going to be smell. X shadow. So, uh, saying cover my head with the towel first and then say my name. Well, then I won't be able to go. Meow meow. Let me go see. I got a new kitty. I think it's finally decided to uh, stop hiding. Meow meow. Meow meow. Where'd you go? Yeah. I hear ya. Whoopsie. 
Yeah, there's the kitties making noise, huh, Scrappy? Sorry about that. Let's take a quick break. Give the kitty some water. Where'd, where'd the kitty go? There's the kitty. There's the meow meow. The meow meow. No, do you want to hide again? Okay, you can hide. <laughs> oh. Well, if the kitty's... Oh, now it's gonna... Okay. Let me try this again. Meow meow. Get this off of here. Come on. Get some food. Can I look see some food? Are you probably thirsty? Get you some water. Yeah, scrappy. You need something small enough to get the kitty some water. Yeah, I'm gonna get you some water, meow meow. Yeah. Meow meow. thirsty, you've been hiking all day. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's a little kitty. It's meow. It's look, it's the kitty cam. It's a little kitty. Meow little itty bitty kitten, six weeks old, just got it today. Yeah. Meow. again yeah I gotta set you up a litter box too huh I got a box for you yeah but for now Some dirt for you to. All right. Yeah, so I got her this morning and she's been hiding ever since. This is the first time she's decided to come out. So, yep, I got me a little future Mauser. Um,. I haven't figured that out yet. She's been hiding from me. She's been hiding from me all day. I think the uh, people that gave her to me called her Bonnie or something like that. I can't remember. So anyway. You scared of a oh, Scrappy's not going to hurt you. Yeah. So. So anyway, where were we? <laughs> Okay, so let's say our say Arthur. Cover head with tell. Alright, I'm just gonna save and call it uh, fun. Because we're just fooling around here. Um, 
say Arthur. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, here comes the kitty. I better close the door. You want to come? You just want some attention, huh? Let me go close the door. <laughs> now, yep, you're gonna get. You're gonna meet Scrappy now. You're gonna meet Scrappy now. Crawling all over the place. So anyway, that's funny. <laughs> the beast is puzzled by a voice coming from something it can't see. Slowly it dawns on the creature that someone is trying to make a fool of it. It starts to look for you again. That's funny. Thanks, Ty Thanks there, Stormtrooper Cylon. That's a good idea. Let's see what else we can do. Um... Um, you stumble, but you can't see. Okay, so I want to, uh, all right, let's do this again because, uh, so I can do the fun with the, uh, well, maybe, maybe we can do this. Yep. Unfortunately, the beast has already caught sight of you again. All this fooling around has made it doubly angry and hungry. With a vast savage roar, the beast tears you limb from limb. All right, restore. What's that? Heart, uh, heart free. Push button. Okay, let me get to... What? Oh, switch. Push switch. Yeah. Okay, back to the shack. A six-week-old kitten back in October was told it was a female named her Leela. Two months later, Leela had to be neutered. Oops. Yep. I don't know. I think it's... I think it's worse with a girl kitty. I'll probably have to get her fixed or I'll be like overrun with cats yeah are you I hope you're gonna be a good mauser are you gonna be good at catching mice yeah okay he's a friendly kid he likes people you want scrappy come here scrappy come on see there's the kitty yeah there's the kitty the kitty's doing, you're doing pretty good with the dog there, you little kitten. Your little fur's all split up. Yeah, Scrappy's a good dog. He won't, Scrappy's a good dog. He won't hurt the kitty, huh, Scrappy? Yeah. There, they've met. So. Huh. Oh. Yeah, the kitty's scared. Okay, where well, we are here. See, feel. Okay, now smell will work. X shadow. Now let's save the game as fun. Although we probably say Arthur. East, and the key, okay, memorial, read memorial, Gleb Snard Fitz, Bibbs Trench, Zeke Fitzberry, Elmo Smith, Brian Spike Berkowitz, Clybert Quackentotter, all right, I probably messed up. Cover head with towel. Oh, cool, there is time to move that. Did it? Carve. 
Arthur with stones. Remove towel. Read memorial. Arthur Dent. Arthur Dent's carved on there now. Cool. So that that was cool. Except for uh, so I think we've had most of the fun in the beast lair. Let's see if we can still get out of here in time. Whoops. To get the interface. Oh, we could have. Cool. So anyway, that was some of the cool stuff. All right, kitty. I'm going to put you down by the dog. Yeah. He won't, he's a good dog. Yeah, see, he's a good dog. Yeah, it's a good scrappy. Mm hmm. All right. <coughs> so let's, uh. And Beast was where we were actually at. The corridor lies aft of here, so we want to go aft. And the gangway leads up. This is the bridge, and actually inventory, and I should have, yeah, the paint chipper and the interface. So let's uh, drop gun, comma chipper, Um, I guess we push the switch again and see what's up. I'm going to save this as heart three again, even though we already just saved. Um, and see what happens this time. A mist spins round your head. You fall into what seems like a bottomless pit. Suddenly you hit the bottom so hard you wish it had been bottomless. All right. Um, are you ready to eat? You see you've met the dog. You run around. Here's some, you need some water, you need some food. There's some dirt. To scratch in. There you go. Now you're ready to drink some water. All right. Kitty success. It quit hiding and drinks and drinking some water and eating now. <laughs> and uh, let's see what we got here. Let's try to look. I guess you can hear nothing, smell nothing, taste nothing, see nothing, feel. So that's all five senses. We can't. Okay. All five senses are listed. One, two, three, four. Okay, still. Whoops. See, feel, hear, taste, smell. Okay, still. F can't. Taste, see, hear, feel. Okay. Is smell there? No. X shadow.
What the heck? This is the lair of the ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll. There are exits east and southwest. The ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll is here looking particularly nasty and hungry. The beast whips its evil smelling tail away from your nose and bellows a brain shattering roar. By suddenly popping out of nowhere, you have disturbed its train of thought. However, the beast is beginning to get used to this sort of thing. Shrugs it off and sinks ten or so of its tungsten carbide, vast pain claws, into you. Everything becomes dark. Huh. Yeah, but it's it, sort of, but not really. It wasn't. It was the beast again, but it wasn't the beast again because you couldn't do anything. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm counting how many senses are listed. One, two, three, four. Look. Can't see anything, smell it, taste it, or okay, wait. Listen. Aft. What the heck? Push switch. <laughs> Come here, kid. Come on. Come on. Okay, you can sit on my lap. Now you want to. Now you're ready to stop hiding, huh? All right, where were we? Hear, see, smell, taste. See, smell, taste, feel. It does feel a bit cold and wet and squishy. There seems to be some liquid at your fingertips. X liquid. It seems coldish. Oh, hell, now what? <sighs> Taste liquid? It tastes just like wine. In fact, oh wow, that worked. You realize with a growing embarrassment that your hand is sitting in a glass of white wine. You are at a party being given by a distant and incredibly boring acquaintance. Among the people you've encountered, too, are a shy, mousy fellow from the West Country named Arthur and a flamboyant guy named Phil. You've had too many drinks already and the room is beginning to buzz. Living room. You are in a large living room. There is a party going on. Other rooms lie to the west and southwest and the apartment's front door is south of here. Phil is here. Arthur Dent is here. You notice the hostess approaching but using several mingling couples as cover, 
You maneuver away. Interesting. You have a plate of horse divorce, a glass of white wine, or horse divorce, hors d'oeuvres, <laughs> a glass of white wine, and a handbag. So I must be trillion. Hmm. Open handbag. Opening the handbag reveals a pair of tweezers. Examine Phil. He is very attractive, if a little weird, and has a slightly otherworldly look. You suspect he's a party crasher. An impression reinforced by his inappropriate garb. He seems clothed for a fancy dress party or something. Because he has what appears to be a large bird cage on his shoulder with a black drape over it. The bird inside must be asleep because you can hear snoring coming from inside of it. I think we know who Phil is. Hmm. So that's Zaphod. Oh, yeah, you can hang out right there. <laughs> huh. Let's examine Arthur. Arthur seems nice and well-meaning but also terribly shy. He has tried to start a conversation with you several times, but still hasn't gotten past hello. He has an enormous, unsightly ball of fluff on his jacket. Interesting. Get fluff. As is the case so often at parties, you find that you are holding too much and can't pick up anything else. Arthur walks up and says, Hello, again. He looks shy, embarrassed and stuck for anything else to say, and quickly walks to the other end of the room. <coughs> Huh. Well, let's drop the plate. Get fluff. You remove the jacket fluff, improving Arthur's appearance greatly. He is clearly touched and starts happily to chat away to you. You discover that he is only slightly more interesting to talk to than an averagely interesting wall. Um. Uh, put fluff in handbag. The hostess, whom you've been avoiding all evening, scurries up with your plate of hors d'oeuvres. Oh, hello, Tricia. How lovely to see you. I think you dropped this, dear. Arthur tries, unsuccessfully, to interest you by talking about cricket. Let's examine the hostess. You see nothing special. 
get plate, X plate, whoa. <laughs> Arthur tries unsuccessfully to interest you by talking about computers. All right, let's see what we got here. You are in a large living room. There's a party going on. There's other rooms. See, we didn't check the other rooms out yet. Phil comes up and grips your shoulder. Hey, babe, this guy boring you? Why not come with me instead? I'm from a different planet. <laughs> he takes you out to the parking lot where his flashy interorbital ion scooter is parked between two Volkswagens. After mounting it, the scooter accelerates at such great speed that you black out almost immediately. Everything becomes dark. Well, <clears throat> What was, was the purpose of this to get the fluff? Or was I supposed to do something else here? Hmm. What do you feel here? Hey <laughs> there, right? Was I supposed to just get that fluff, or is there something else I had to do here? I guess we'll find out if we end up back here. So, anyway. You can't see, feel... See, smell... Listen. Yeah, and the ex exit's actually aft. Oops, aft again. And up. Okay, so the handbag contains the fluff now. So that's cool. Just the fluff. I think you can try eating, drinking stuff at the party, but just for amusing reactions. Cool. So I'm going to save again. Called it Got Fluff. And, uh, press switch. Now, it's probably been, it's been more than 10 years since I played this. I don't remember much of it at all. A mist spins around your head, you fall, blah, 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 blah. All right, here we go again. Where, where will we end up? It's probably going to be smell, or maybe it won't. So taste, see, hear, feel, smell, all right? Feel, see, feel, hear, taste, smell. Alright. Taste, hear, feel, smell. But we should be able to... Let's look. You can't hear anything, smell anything, feel anything, or taste anything. Why can't I look? What the heck? You see a painfully bright light that stabs at the front of your eyes. Examine light. The light resolves itself into the bright yellow sun of Earth. Aha!
so I think we're Ford Prefect now. You're hurrying up a country lane. The sky is lit and clear, but you keep glancing at it with apprehension, because you know that it will shortly be torn apart by Vogon ships, and that the hills and trees around you will just burn up and blow away. And you hope there's time for a quick drink beforehand. You want to hitch a ride aboard the Vogon fleet, but are anxious because it's so long since you were through a matter transference beam. The road runs from Arthur's home to the north toward the village pub to the west. All right, so let's just go north. Be <laughs> Before you is the house of your friend, Arthur Dent, who is lying in front of a bulldozer. You have no idea why. You have no idea that most things about... Wait. You have no, de no idea about most things about Arthur, even why you regard him as a friend, but you do, and must therefore return his towel before you leave. Nearby stands an impatient man. There seems to be a bit of an atmosphere. He don't know. See what this does. Give towel to Arthur. You have a satchel. Interesting. You see nothing special about Arthur Dent. Oh, Mr. Prosser. Prosser can't hear you from here. Huh. Oh, there we go. Opening the satchel reveals... There we go. Sandragonian mineral water, a towel, hitchhiker's guide, and electronic... And satchel fluff. Hmm. All right. So we want to get towel. Give towel to Arthur. Inexplicably, Arthur takes no notice of the towel, which magnificently you are trying to return to him. Instead, he says, Ford, what about my home? You start guiltily. Does he actually know that the earth is about to be destroyed? You start to ask him, then stop. If he knows, what the zork is he doing lying here in the mud in front of? You look around. You notice the bulldozer properly for the first time. You notice Arthur's house. You notice the workmen. The penny drops. His house is about to be demolished. You feel like a complete... What's the word? No, actually, idiot was the word I was looking for. No, in a reckless moment, you go completely mad and decide that you ought to take Arthur with you. 
You try to tell Arthur about the importance of getting a drink, but he's rambling about a man called Prosser. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing on the other side of the bulldozer. Let's try this. What the heck? How do I get to the other side of the bulldozer? Arthur's house is to the north. Country lane is south. Go around bulldozer. Oh, that worked. You walk around the bulldozer. Prosser is standing here, looking cross and frustrated, realizing that you are a friend of Arthur's. He starts to talk at you. He says that this sort of protest is all very well, but what Mr. Dent must realize is that he's had plenty of time to make a formal protest at the proper time and place, and that spending months going through the appropriate official channels filling in the appropriate official forms and going to the appropriate official public hearings is the right way of going about it. And lying around whimsically in the mud is not. He says that he personally hates mud and despises the sort of people who lie in it. Talk to Prosser. Hmm. <laughs> that worked. Prosser, lie down. Prosser blinks in astonishment. You mean go and lie in the mud in his place? You will explain, or you explain, that Arthur will only move if someone else takes over for him. Prosser shakes his head in such a manner as to suggest that he is very weary of the world and you tactfully forbear from mentioning that it won't be troubling him much longer. Reluctantly, he follows you back towards Arthur. You rapidly, rapidly conclude the business. Prosser lies in the mud. Arthur, bewildered, nevertheless stands up and appears to be ready to follow you to the pub. All right. So. So we want to go south. Village pub to the west, west. The pub is pleasant and cheerful and full of pleasant and cheerful people who don't know they've got about 12 minutes to live and are therefore having a spot of lunch. Some music is playing on an old jukebox. The exit is to the east. There is a barman serving at the bar. Arthur follows you. All right. Um... Let's try this. Listen to music. The song is Hey Jude by the Beatles, footnote 4. It is a particular favorite, and listening to it calms you down and cheers you up. Footnote 4. The first single they recorded on their own Apple label, and one of their most successful songs ever. Alright, so let's uh, order beer. You order six pints of bitter, three for you, three for Arthur. According to the Hitchhiker's Guide, this should cushion your system against the coming shock 
of the matter transference beam. As you drink the first pint, you mention to Arthur that you are from a different planet, but it makes little impression. This surprises you because you thought it was the sort of thing that would interest people. All right, let's uh, order peanuts. Oops. Nice. You'll you buy some peanuts, which you'll need to replace protein loss from the matter transference beam. A tip you picked up from the Hitchhiker's Guide. All right, so cool. So now I think we just need to uh, drink beer. It goes down well. At least they managed to get something right on this benighted planet. You decide it's time to tell Arthur that the world is about to end. You tell him. Arthur is completely unperturbed. Curious. You wonder what sort of news it would take to disturb him. Drink beer again. It goes down well. You hear a muffled crash. It's probably Arthur's little house getting knocked down, which you tell him. This does upset him, and he tears out the door. Through the window, you see him running up the lane. A small dog chases after him, yapping, and he throws it a cheese sandwich. The dog devours the sandwich with passion and ignores a passing microscopic space fleet. All right, I, I was thinking. So we, which was it? East? Yep. You run up the lane after Arthur. You pass pass a serene dog. Fate cannot harm him. He has dined today. And Arthur's homes to the north. You reach the site of what was Arthur's home. It is now a pile of rubble. Mr. Prosser looks sheepishly triumphant. A trick few people can do, as it requires a lot of technically complex deltoid muscle work. Front of house. There is a huge pile of rubble to the north. A path leads around it to the northeast and northwest, and a country lane is visible to the south. Arthur Dent is here. Mr. Prosser from the local council is standing at the side of the bulldozer. He seems to be wearing a digital watch. Um, save. I'm going to call this Ford. Get guide. Right on schedule. According to the news you picked up last night on your sub Etha Sensomatic, a huge fleet of Vogon construction ships hurtles noisily through the sky. Time is very, very short. Storms break in the wake of ships. The wind whips at you and makes it difficult to stand. You grab a hold of a tree. Um, drop guide? I mean, that's what happened. And then Arthur picked it up, right? Okay. The vast yellow ships thunder across the sky spreading waves of terror and panic in their wake. The voice of the Vogon captain slams across the country, insisting that the planning charts and demolition orders have been available at the local planning, local planning office in Alpha Centauri for 50 years, and it's too late to start making a fuss about it now. You remove the electronic sub ether signaling device from your satchel. Lights pulsate across its surface. You fumble with the thumb as you hold on to the tree 
against the fierce wind. It falls to the ground near Arthur's feet. Arthur is struggling desperately. towards you. The end of this planet is now only seconds away. Aha. Uh -huh. I see. Thank you. And I think I missed it. Fierce scales whip across the land and thunder bangs continuously through the air in the wake of the giant ships. You struggle to reach the thumb, but the wind is too fierce and you are driven back. Fortunately, at this point, Arthur picks up the thumb and somehow manages to push the right button. However often you do it, you are still stunned by the shock of dematerialization. The scene around is ripped away like flimsy backcloth. Everything becomes dark. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, I can't remember what you do with the fluff, but I, for some reason it seems like you need to find it all. Hmm. That's right, because Arthur can't get in Ford Satchel. So let's try this restore. And uh, get fluff. Give fluff to Arthur. Arthur Hicksups takes the fluff and sticks it in his pocket. Okay. Get guide. Vast yellow ships thunder across the sky, spreading waves of terror and panic in their wake. The voice of the Vogon captain slams across the country insisting that the planning charts and demolition orders have been available at the local planning office in Alpha Centauri for 50 years and it's too late to start making a fuss about it now. You remove the electronic sub etha signaling device from your satchel. Lights pulsate across its surface. You fumble with the thumb as you hold on to the tree against the fierce wind. It falls to the ground near Arthur's feet. Arthur is struggling desperately towards you. The end of this planet is now only seconds away. Okay, cool. Fierce scales whip across the land and thunder bangs continuously through the air. So here we are again. Arthur picks up the thumb and somehow manages to push the right button. So we got the fluff now. Saves are very important in these old Infocom games. How off, however often you do it, you are still stunned by the shock of dematerialization. The scene around is ripped away like a flimsy black. Everything becomes dark. Okay, I think we got... I think that was successful. And this is going to end up being listen. So what was that? We've got the bug bladder. We've done the trillion mission. We've done the Ford mission. I think there's two more to do. And at some point we've got to make a real cup of tea. And use the uh, drive while it's plugged into the ship's computer at some point, but for now
and no Invis no Invisa clues yet. Of course, Stor uh, Stormtrooper Cylons giving lots of help there in the chat. All right, so. Listen. And the exits, of course, is to aft. And inventory. Interesting. Oh, your gown contains satchel fluff now. Cool. That's right, the other fluff's inside the handbag now. Alright, I'm going to save this as Ford again. And uh, what are they going to throw at us next? Oh, I'm still in entry bay number two. Aft. to drop any of this stuff. I don't think so. Push. Switch. So here we go again. Let's see what happens this time. Look. One, two, three, four, five senses. Okay, look again. One, two, three, four, five senses. Look again. Okay, what we got here? One, two, three, four sentences. So we can see, feel, hear, taste. See, feel, hear, smell. X shadow. I missed the bug bladder beast again. Was this going to happen every time? One, two, three, four, five, okay. One, two, three, four, five, okay. One, two, three, four, uh oh. So T's. You can't see, you can't smell, you can't feel. So listen. After. Aft, up, push switch, and let's try again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five senses. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. Taste. See. Hear. 
feel. Okay, smell. X shadow. Huh. It's the beast again. What the heck? Do we need the coffee to get to the next two? I mean the real tea? Listen. Aft. All right, let's see here. Inventory. A Nutramat computer interface. Examine. X interface. Consult guide on Nutrimat. Aha! The guide checks through its sub Ethernet database and eventually comes up with the following entry. A typically unreliable Serious Cybernetics Corporation product. The Nutramat analyzes the user's neural paths to provide the supposedly ideal offering. Its computing power is frankly abysmal. So the optional computer interface is a good thing to go for. Aha! Oops. The Nutramat has a touch sensitive pad, a dispensing slot, and a surface panel which is closed. It bears a small label which reads another fine product of the serious Cybernetics Corporation. All right. Panel. Opening the neutral map reveals a circuit board. Um, put interface in neutral map. There is no room. Okay, get bored. And close panel. Touch pad. <laughs> the Nutramat is puzzled that you want something made by pouring boiling water on dead leaves and squirting stuff from a cow in it. 
It says that it will need help, some help from Eddie, the shipboard computer. The Nutramat begins to whir. Let's wait. A red sign lights up saying memory overload. Well, what the heck? I thought that was going to work. What the heck? Another red sign lights up saying, Reserve memory overload. A third sign lights up. Processor overload. Switch to terminal mode. Please wait. Nutramat engaged. A blue sign lights up. Nutramat going online. More and more signs light up. Shipboard computer accessed. Main memory overload. Reserve memory accessed. Parallel processors online. Numbers being crunched. Oh boy. Announcement, announcement. This is Eddie, the shipboard computer. Emergency situation. Nuclear missiles have just been launched at us from the approaching planet. Which my data banks indicate is the legendary lost planet of Magrethia. I cannot perform evasive maneuvers because all circuits are currently engaged by the Nutramat. The missiles will turn this ship into a huge atomic fireball in approximately eight turns. By the way, somebody didn't finish their spinach at dinner. Well, interesting. I wonder if I was supposed to make try to make tea yet and find out. So starboard. Up. Put large plug in large receptacle. Push switch. Generator. As you flip the switch, sparks fly from the large receptacle. My new console my new control console, wails Eddie, the shipboard computer. This is the thanks I get? The universe goes crazy for a moment. Announcement, announcement. This is Eddie, the shipboard computer. The missiles have turned into a sperm whale at an improbability factor of 2 to the 39,000 745th power to one against. The whale is currently plummeting toward the legendary lost planet of Magrethia. I hope this will teach you to listen to me when I say that legendary lost planets 
can be dangerous. I am proceeding with the preset landing instructions. Ford, Zaphod, and Trillion saunter by on their way back to the sauna. Good work, kid, says Zaphod, slamming you on the back. Hmm. What happens now if we press switch? Okay, here we go. We're still going. The blackness hits you like a 16 ton truck. All right. Look. Taste, see, hear, feel, smell. Well, we got here. Hear, smell, taste, see, feel. Okay. One, two, three, four. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Taste, see, hear, smell. Feel. Taste liquid. back here again you are at a party being given by a distant and incredibly boring acquaintance among the people you've been introduced to are a shy mousy fellow from the West Country named Arthur and a flamboyant guy named Phil you have had too many drinks already and the room is beginning to buzz. You are in a large living room. There is a party going on. Other rooms lie to the west and southwest. And the... <laughs> and the apartment's front door is south of here. Phil is here. Arthur Dent is here. The hostess, a lethally dull woman... <laughs> corners you and bores you to death. Literally, everything becomes dark. Interesting. Well, at least it wasn't the bug bladder beast again. So let's uh, do the listen, because it'll probably be the heart of gold, I think. One, two, three, four... Aft. Aft. Port. Oh, wow. You are in the galley area of the ship, containing a machine which is the state of the art in nutritional technology. A serious cybernetics corporation, Nutramat. There's an exit starboard. A carton labeled Nutramat computer interface is sitting here. It looks like the slot contains T. Consult guide on T. Sorry. That portion of our sub ETHA database was accidentally deleted last night during a wild office party. The lost data will be restored as soon as we can find someone who knows where the backup tapes are kept, if indeed any are kept at all. All right, let's uh, consult guide on substitute. A 
never said that again, huh? Um, Brownian motion. I hope that's how you... The best randomless generator is a simple Brownian motion. Any hot gas or liquid is a good source. Alright, let's just, uh, get T. See, I, at some point, I've got to remove the common sense particle from my brain. I remember that. So let's uh, starboard up, drop T. get bit all right this is Eddie the shipboard computer we have just landed on the legendary lost planet of Magrathia I don't want anyone going outside until I've checked the atmosphere Climatic conditions, existence of dangerous wildlife, airborne diseases, volcanic activity, presence of real estate agents, and more than 8,000 other possible dangers. This routine check will take about 14.9 years, and don't even think about leaving until I finish, because I'm jamming the hatch. Put bit and T. All right, put bit and T. All right, push switch generator. Just go ahead and one, two, three, four, five. Whoa, whoa. One, two, three, four. You can hear, smell, taste, see. Huh. Oh, wow. Yuck, you are jerked to your senses by the realization that you are licking the lining of a whale's stomach. Huh. Inside the sperm whale. You are in the stomach of a sperm whale. You hear the distant sound of rushing wind. There is a flower pot here. X flower pot. The pot is filled with fertile soil. It is inscribed. Inertial Guidance System, Magrethian Missile Company. It must have been created by the same burst of improbability that created the whale itself. Okay, I'm stuck. What do I do inside the sperm whale? Hmm. I 
I know there's something about that flower pot. There's no room. Not yet. Alright, I've got the flower pot. Now what? I don't know what else to do. Splat, everything becomes dark. Let's try it again then. All right. So cuz the thing always comes back to me. Cuz I can't lose it. Thank you again, Stormtrooper Cylon. All right, so let's... I know it's going to ask. X liquid it seems warmish. Taste liquid that woke me up last time. All right, get thing. Put pot in thing. Oh, get pot. Put pot in thing. Done. Splat. Everything becomes dark. So we'll listen again, if I remember to hit G. Aft, inventory. Cool. Thank you, Stormtrooper Cylon. The thing contains a flower pot. The thing your aunt gave you, which you don't know what it is. So, cool. Alright. I'm going to call this... Uh, 
flower pots. It's uh, it's pretty close to two hours into it. We made uh, made some made a made a good amount of progress. Didn't have to resort to Invisi clues. So maybe, maybe we can finish this Tuesday. Let's uh, type quit. We are about to give you your score. Put on your peril sensitive sunglasses now. Hit return. I just played this a few weeks ago when you first mentioned playing. Let me know if I'm helping too much. Um, no, nah, I don't think you're helping too much. I mean, it's a lot better than uh, resorting to Invisi clues. <laughs> Seriously. But, uh, so it, what it's, it's looking like we'll be able to finish this Tuesday, though. And then, uh, And if we uh, finish this up on Tuesday, I'll take a break from Infocom and we'll do a Lost Pig and Place Underground. But boy, that was a lot better than the last episode being stuck almost the whole time. <laughs> So no, you're not helping too much. I think that's much better than being stuck for most of an episode. <laughs> uh, so, this is affirmative. And any key to exit. So yeah. So I think there's a... So I think there's one, I still have to, I know, I, there's, a, there's at some point, I have to remove the common, common sense particle from my brain so that I can hold T and no T at the same time. I remember that, but most of this I don't remember. So, Thank you all for watching, and uh, maybe we can finish this up Tuesday. I think we're getting pretty close, regardless of what the score said. I think we're getting pretty close. And then, uh, after Lost Pig, the current plan is to... Uh, go back to Infocom and do Zork 2, but that could change. And, uh, right. And there, yep, there's the kitty. Say goodbye, kitty. Yeah. He hid all day till I started playing the game. Just hid from us all day until I started playing the game. Yeah. Yeah. No. We just got to teach you where the litter box is, huh? I got to put some sand in that thing. All right. So, yeah. Hit subscribe for the kitty. <laughs> uh, all right. So, I'll catch you all Tuesday, and hopefully we can finish this game Tuesday. Thank you for watching. And, uh, this has been fun. And, uh, it's been years since I played Lost Pig, so who knows how that's going to go. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> you know, I'm thinking about uh, also two days a week. Um, doing an old RPG 
and I've been thinking about Ultima 7, possibly playing that on like uh, Thursdays and another day, so um, let, me, uh, let me know what you all think about that, and uh, maybe leave some comments down below, and I'll see you Tuesday. Bye-bye, all. Bye-bye.